As the second interview in our Black History Month series throughout October, we spoke to First Team Assistant Manager Terry Connor, otherwise known as TC. TC had a playing career spanning across 15 years and six clubs, starting at Leeds United, where he made his debut at just 17 years old as the only black player in the team. And so we started by finding out a little bit about TC's background and heritage. I've got an older sister and two brothers, one older, one younger than me. My mum and dad were born and raised in the Caribbean in uh, St Kitts and Nevis. And they uh, came to, or well, my father came to, came to England 50, 1955, I think it was, the year he came over, probably towards the start of the Windrush era. People were coming in from, from the Caribbean to um, help uh, rejuvenate the, the country. And my dad uh, thought it would be a real opportunity to come across and, and start a new, new life. Yeah, we lived in Leeds, we grew up in, in Leeds. As I say, I'm one of four, family of four kids. Although we didn't have a great deal growing up, I always remember the time growing up with, uh, with great memories, fond memories of Leeds and Chapel Town where, where I was born and raised. As football went on to play such a big part in TC's life, we asked how he got into the game. Through school, really. I know before that my, my dad likes to tell the story now that um, I used to um, play with his cricket ball, but I wanted to kick it. it. I didn't ever want to catch it or play cricket. And obviously from the Caribbean, he was keen on his cricket. Um, but whenever he, whenever he rolled the ball or threw the ball, I, I always wanted to try and kick it or, uh, well, not use my hands, basically. And he, he reckons that's where I, I started from. But football just wasn't not really a a main sport down down in down in those areas, those parts of the world, until until much more recently, to be a footballer so early on, um, or want to kick a ball so early on, um, he has no idea where I got that from. TC then went on to recall what was a momentous day for him, his professional debut for Leeds United. I remember the date because it, I think it was the 17th of November because I was 17 on the 9th of November, so I knew it was a week after my birthday uh, that I played for the first team. And if you could imagine in those days, having just one sub. So I was I was there as a, like the 12th man sort of thing. And one of our centre backs got injured. Uh, Paul Maidley got injured and I had to go onto the pitch and we had to obviously rejig the team for me to play up front. And I remember with about seven, eight minutes to go, uh, the ball being crossed, I took a touch and managed to find the bottom corner at the cop end, so it got, we got off to a, a really good start um, for my first game, game, first game at Ellen Road. You know, there's, there's, it's one of those things that you, you never forget. It, it was something that I'd grown up with, as I say, from being two, two and a half, three, wanting to play football. Went through the school, went through the Leeds district county teams to be uh, at Leeds from the age of 10. I was affiliated to Leeds United to get through and to get to 17 and score at the cop end, you know, your first goal in your, in your debut game. There's just no better feeling to, to describe it. And that, my England under 21 cap, uh, are two of the most proudest or moments that I've had in football, I think. We then asked TC who he looked up to for inspiration as his role models. On the old black and white TV that my dad used to have, I'd seen people like Clyde Best, um, through the early, late 60s, early 70s. And then more recently, Viv Anderson and uh, the, West, the West Brom had the three degrees. They had Brendan Batts and Sil Regis, Laurie Cunningham. And I remember those as like, I've seen them on telly, seen them on Match of the Day. And I just wanted to be like, like them. I wanted to go and play football like them. So to do what I did was just the, like the, the culmination of that dream. I, I wouldn't know that I was at that time that you know I would become anything like influential or, or have, leave any legacy at all in terms of playing and coaching and managing in football. Just wanted to play football like I'd seen on the on the telly and anything that was put in my way, any barriers that I put in my way, I would overcome them just so I could play football on a level playing field with everybody else um, at professional level. On the 30th of March 1981, TC played as part of the Black All-Stars team in a testimonial for Cesspod, who was honoured as the first black player to have a testimonial granted by the FA. TC reflected on that and how it shaped his development as a player and coach into helping others. 
I just remember, I, I grew up with, um, as, as Seth is one of my role models, and he actually lived in Leeds. So from about, I would say from about 13, 14, when I first met him, we, we, we saw a lot of each other through to me making my debut and the first full year in professional football. But I just knew Seth as, as Seth, and he got his testimonial. At the time, I, I wouldn't even have known that he was the first black player to ever uh, be granted a testimonial. We just wanted to turn up and play. I remember uh, Justin Frashen, who I think Cyril tur turned up everywhere. They came from London, they came everywhere to play in that game. And uh, I just remember it being a, a real sort of like celebration of a black team, which most of us hadn't seen each other because we were always opponents playing for Leeds and representing Leeds. Uh, not only was I only black player in the team, I was only black player in the whole club. So, and that seemed to repeat itself with the Justin Fashion News, with the other black players that played at that time. There was only ever really one of them at first team level. So we were opponents and we would share a nod and a, and a you know, well done and that would be a bit of appreciation. But we were never ever together until we came for that game. So it was a real sort of like celebration that we were able to actually meet and be on the same side to play rather than always being in opposition camps. I think because of the colour of my skin, it might help a, black, a young black player. And I know in the past when um, instances have happened to them as black players, I've been through those situations before, so I'm able to maybe offer some advice and some comfort to them that I'm still here, still working in the game, still trying to, still trying to make a mark and still trying to press on with breaking down you know, barriers uh, that, that, are, that are often there for, for black players. But as a, as a coach, I feel it's my role, it's my duty to coach everyone um, and I treat everyone the same. But I know at times that black players just gives them something that they go, do you know what, he's, he's been there, he must have been through the situations that I've been through and can be someone that I can maybe you know, speak to if I have a problem. I don't make it my issue to go looking and go give them anything other than I would give any other player of any other nationality or creed. But I'm there, if, if they need it, that's what I'm there for, to, to help as much as I can for them to develop as young, as young players into senior players. The ones that reach the very, very pinnacle, they have that platform that they can express those, those thoughts that they've had in a very positive way and again, make that platform just a little bit easier for the rest of the rest of the players to follow, young players to follow. The biggest thing I can say is to have belief in yourself um, and to work hard for it. You'll get plenty of knockbacks. I remember my dad used to, was, his saying was, uh, we used to say to him, oh, but dad, it's not fair for a, a lot of things that happened early on in our lives. And his, adv his advice or his motto to me was, I never told you life was fair. I told you you had to work hard and things may come your way, but it's not a fair world. And that's what you have to try to overcome. Uh, those, those tough hurdles, those tough barriers that might be there, particularly if you're young and black, but they can be overcome. And uh, if you can, if I can push some boundaries back and they can stand on my shoulders and get to the next level, then I'm, I'm all for that. I, I wish that Black History Month was every month and that people did things and spoke about it and expressed their opinions all year through and not just uh, when it gets to October, we're gonna have a, 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 you know, we're gonna shine a light on it for a month and then it goes away. It's a daily thing, it's an ongoing message. It's not something that we just do for a, a period of time and stop it. If, it. if it's in schools, then it should be in schools on a daily basis. For a football club, it should be on a daily basis. If we're supporting the international team, it should, that should, that, those things should be on a daily basis basis um, and all we can try and do is I think is educate each other and try as much as we can to make everything in our lives uh, equal and for there to be no discrimination no racism but that will always 
would take time, it would take education, it would take the things that go on in schools, take things that go on in the football society, in society in general. All those things have to be part of our day-to-day -day lives, if you like, if we're going to make a lasting and a significant change.